You know, a couple of years ago, I taught a course called Religion and Peace Building. And halfway through the course, I realized that I had titled the course wrong. It should be Religious Peace Building. Because religions can be a source through the set of beliefs and commitments that we make to God and to one another, that we, our thinking, our action together can really seek justice and build peace. I'm recalling a couple of uh, avenues that have been chosen by religions to actually pursue this earnestly. The one is um, led by a Hindu scholar, Arvind Sharma, and it's called Towards a Religious Declaration on Human Rights by World Religions. Its project is almost 26 years old, where it's an ongoing conversation of what it is that religions can bring to human rights, to the understanding of human rights. What are the values and the principles that religions hold that really ground human rights, that give us a sense of what the reason behind human rights? So it's not just a constructivist argument. It comes deep from deep within. It isn't something that we human beings are constructed. It's something that God is calling us to. And these religions have really contributed to a deeper understanding. The genius of Arvind Sharma, Professor Arvind Sharma's work, he's at McGill University, but the genius about that is he keeps calling it toward a declaration of human rights by the world's religions because he recognizes that it's an ongoing project, both of scholars and of grassroots, grassroots communities who are living um, sometimes the obstacles to human rights, dealing with conflict and violence, and also trying to address the needs um, and, and securing people's rights. And so towards a declaration of human rights by world's religions is an ongoing project um, that he continues to engage us in. The other is coming from our own church. Two important initiatives, I think, are contributing to peace building in the world. Laudato Si, Pope Francis's encyclical. Pope Francis's encyclical is really a summons for all of us to think about the way that we are all connected. We're connected to each other and we're connected to the environment, to our, to the very existence. The document itself is evolutionary thinking in the sense of promoting systemic thinking, in the sense of, of our understanding that we are, that the way that we even think is a way of recognizing how connected we are to each other. His polyhedric vision in the document. We're looking at various sides of an issue, and that's important. It isn't just bilateral understanding, it's this polyhedric understanding. And also the idea of us creating together an integral ecology, a network that recognizes how connected we are to each other and building up ways of us supporting that connection, healing that connection, promoting that connection so that each part of the creation that God has given us flourishes. So I think that that document is a peace document. I have said publicly that I don't think Francis has to write a peace document. He's written it. What he needs to do is help us to understand different aspects of it. And this leads to his world message of peace in 2017, which has a message of asking Catholics to consider gospel nonviolence as a way of life as a new politics for the future. Pope Francis has uh, drawn from the initiative that started with Pax Christi International and the development, peace and development offices of the Vatican that are looking for Catholics to think about active gospel nonviolence. The idea that can we now replace the just war theory with a just peace theory? And that has to do with the ways that we consider what are the obstacles to re helping people realize the life that God has called them to, to the flourishing that we are all called to be, to have. And so I think that um, these are showing us that religion actually is leading the way to the, to the ways that we can build peace uh, with one another.